Hallelujah. Every praise belongs to our God. We thank God for our praise team, for all of our musicians, for the ministry of music, and for them bringing us to a place that we are now ready to receive the word of God. Certainly, we honor God for his presence on this afternoon. We thank God for our pastor, Dr. Byron Brazier. Won't you help me celebrate that great man of God whom God has set over this house? We thank God for our first lady evangelist, Mary Brazier. Can we praise God for her? Our first lady emerita, Sister Isabel Brazier. And I thank God for the leading lady in my life, Dr. Evangelist Latanya Hayes. There is a word from the Lord, and it's fresh off the press, as they would say. Uh, so we do solicit your prayers. And the Bible lets us know that man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceedeth forth out of the mouth of God. So if you're hungry for the word, somebody shout, let's eat. Father, we thank you today for your kindness and mercy and grace. We thank you for the power of your word, which is able to transform lives. We pray now for the anointing that destroys the yoke. We pray for clarity of hearing what you are depositing even now. Let your spirit speak to our hearts and minds. Give us a fresh revelation and a manna that only can come from on high. Bless and open up the hearts and minds of your people that they may receive your engrafted word and may it bring forth fruit 100 fold. And the people of God said, Amen. I want you to turn with me to St. John chapter 14. We're going to read verses 1 through verse 6. St. John chapter number 14. Verses 1 through 6. Thank God for all of our assistant pastors and for all of the ministers of the gospel and for all the people of God and for those who are worshiping with us online. The scripture reads, Let not your heart be troubled. Ye believe in God, believe also in me. In my Father's house are many mansions. If it were not so, I would have told you. I go to prepare a place for you. And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and receive you unto myself, that where I am, there ye may be also. And whither I go, ye know, and the way you know. Thomas saith unto him, Lord, we know not whither thou goest, and how can we know the way? Jesus said unto him, I am the way, the truth and the life no man cometh unto the father but by me i want to speak to you from the subject jesus will get you there jesus will get you there life is filled with uncertainties when we embark on this journey with Jesus Christ, we really don't know what we're getting ourselves into. We just say yes to him in the revelation of who he is as the only begotten son of God. But we don't know what God has in store for us. We don't know the path. We don't know the plan. We don't know the purpose for which God has united us with Jesus in order to embark on a mission to somewhere. We come down the aisle and we receive Christ. We allow people to have us partially unclothe ourselves and then attempt to drown us telling us that we have been baptized into a new community, but it is a secret society that I know nothing about. Because the only way to get into the community is that God has to invite you. Yes, I received the invitation, but God was the one who initiated the contact in the beginning. And so God invites me into a journey. 
He invites me into an experience to somewhere that I do not know where he's taking me. He gives me the call that he gave to Abraham to leave your family, leave your friends, leave your community and go to a place that I will show you. And so we say, Lord, I believe I'm going to begin the journey of a thousand miles with the first step. And then it seems by the time we get comfortable, there is disruption in our lives that breeds even greater adversity, even greater anxiety and even greater uncertainty. Because I find myself in a place that I didn't expect to be in because the church folk told me that if I walk with Jesus, everything is going to be all right. But now here I am at a decision point and an experience in life where Jesus is telling me that he's going to have to leave me on my own. That, that in this experience that I'm going through, Jesus is not going to be physically present to help me through this situation and so now I have a debilitating cycle that brings me to a point of stress it is the stress in my life that takes a toll on my mind it is the stress in my life that takes a toll on my emotions and it is the stress in my life that takes a toll on my physical body because I'm in a place of uncertainty and because there is always a gap in our knowledge base of where we are and where God is taking us, we need for him to fill in the gaps. Because anytime there is a gap, there is an inability to move forward. When I come to a bridge that is no longer there, I cannot get to the other side. And so because I don't know how God is going to move me from here to the other side of the bridge that is not there, then I have to question my relationship with him. Because I thought that when I gave my life to Jesus, there would never be a separation between me and him. When I gave gave my life to Jesus I thought everything was going to be peachy keen but now here I am confronted with a situation and a circumstance that is beyond my control and even worse Jesus is the one who is initiating the disturbance that is in my life and so when we look at this text what we come to discover that Jesus is number one our confidence builder he is our confidence builder because he shares with them that I am going to leave you all that, that there's a mission that there's a greater assignment that God has placed on my life and it requires for me to physically remove myself from your presence now you have to understand that Jesus had been with them for three and one half years they ate with him. They slept in the same location as him. They fought demons with him. They fed 5,000 people with him. They opened the blind eye with him. He sent them on assignments to preach the gospel in other territory. And now all of a sudden he says, you know what? It was a nice three and a half years, but I got to go. I, I got a peace out. Uh, you, you know that, that I appreciate the time we spent together, but God is calling me higher. There, there's another dimension that he has to take me to because this is only part of my experience. Uh, there is a place that I am going. There is a mission that I am on that has to be fulfilled or the work I want to do in you and with you will not be realized. Uh, see, some Sometimes we settle for a little bit not understanding that God wants to take us to greater.
He, he wants to take us to more than enough. And the only way that God's going to take us from more than enough is we have to allow the perfect work of Christ to be worked in our lives. And any time God's work has to be worked in our lives, it means that trouble is going to come in my life. It means that I'm going to have some difficulty and some experiences that I'm going to have to go through that's going to trouble my heart there's going to be anxiety there's going to be stress there's going to be frustration there's going to be uncertainty because I'm in a place I didn't expect to be in have you ever been there that God brought you somewhere and you were on cruise control and then all of a sudden the brakes hit you didn't have nothing to do with the immediate pause that happened in your life, the disruption that just came and shook your world. And this is what is happening with Jesus and his disciples because they thought he was the king who was coming to conquer Rome and give them back their dominion in the earth. They thought that Jesus was the one who was going to go and cut the head off Caesar and say, get out of Jerusalem. This is my city. This is my town but Jesus says hey boys hey buddies I, I, I gotta go I, I, I gotta go suffer <laughs> I, I gotta go be handed over I have to be betrayed I, I have to go in the grave and their minds couldn't understand that how could the king be killed how could the Messiah fall victim to hanging on the cross? And so the uncertainty was troubling their hearts. And he says, don't be troubled. <laughs> don't, don't get bent out of shape by what I'm telling you. He says that if you hope in God... If you trust in God, then I also want you to trust in me. Oh, no, Jesus, you, you bad boy now because you telling me to put the same faith and confidence in you that I have in the Father. And Jesus is saying that's exactly what I'm asking you to do. That whatever you think about the Father God, the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, I want the same devotion. I want the same loyalty. I want the same commitment. I I want the same trust that you gave him I want you to put it in me because we are the same individual oh, that's good stuff right there see when you're in a season of uncertainty and your confidence is beginning to wane Jesus is saying don't trip don't get bit out of shape you believe in God believe in me I got you I got this. It's under control. I I'm handling the situation because I have a plan for your life. And what I'm really trying to do is help you get to the next level. What I'm trying to do in your life is take you to another dimension. But the only way I can allow you to get there is if you go through this season in your life. See, seasons are difficult because seasons change. But the good thing about seasons is that they bring about a understanding and an awareness of how to manage life because in certain seasons I can wear shorts in other seasons I wear jeans and in other seasons I wear long johns uh, but but no matter what you're wearing you negotiate and navigate the season based upon experience and what God is trying to do to build confidence in your life is to take you through a series of experiences it is it is this experience then that brings me to trust God because I came to him with no experience. I just said yes because the preacher said the doors of the church are open. And so now he says, Isaac, you, you had a good for a while. You've been giving me every praise. You've been singing your songs. You've been reading your Bible. Uh, but now we got to put all that stuff to the test. <laughs> We, we now have to allow you to put your big boy pants on, your, your big girl pants on, and see if you're really in it like you say you are. 
because there is no struggle in the sanctuary there is no struggle on your knees it's when you get up from your prayer knees that you see satan trying to take you out but he says I want you to be confident. I, I, I got to let you go through this. I, I have to leave you for a while, but do you trust me? When you cannot trace me, can you trust me? Because as long as Jesus is there, I'm cool. I ain't worried about no demons. I ain't worried about the Pharisees. I ain't worried about the Sadducees. I ain't worried about the Herodians. I ain't even worried about the Romans because I know this man can speak to the wind and the waves. I saw this man raise somebody from the dead. I ain't worried. But what do you do when y'all start looking around and can't say, hey, Jesus, handle this. Jesus, we got trouble. We got issues. I can't say I got Jesus. You better bag up off me. Jesus said, no, you got to handle it. You got to execute this season by yourself. But I'm not leaving you. I'm leaving you but I'm not leaving you. You may not see me, but you haven't seen me since you gave your life to me, church folk. But you know I'm in your spirit. You know my presence is with you. And so if you can just tap in to the spirit that's in your spirit, you have the confidence that you need to navigate this season in your life. The second thing we see in this text is that Jesus is our space maker. He, he's our space maker because now that I have confidence, now that I can trust him in this season of uncertainty, he says, what I'm doing, Isaac, is I'm making space for you. Uh, see, the reason I'm leaving you here is because I got work to do there. Uh, Y'all missed that. I'm saying it one more time. He says, the reason I can't be here behind the pulpit with you is because there's something down the road I'm preparing for you. You, and so I want to do some construction work down there. Uh -huh. See, the reason that he couldn't stay with them is because he had to go to the cross. Then he had to go to the grave. And then he had to go back to glory so he could sprinkle his blood on the heavenly sanctuary so that they would be able to join him there. And so what God is doing in your life, if you haven't caught it yet, is while he's leaving you here, here he's preparing next for you uh -huh. he's making sure that when you get to point b he's worked everything out in your life so that it's already prepared see the beauty of living life with god and having an experience with him is when you trust jesus you understand that there's always purpose behind the pain there was always a destination behind a disturbance because anytime he says let us go to the other side there's going to be a storm that arises that the enemy seeks to do to cause me to lose my confidence to cause me to turn around and go back to shore when Jesus has already spoken a word over my life that says I have greater that I want you to see I have greater that I want you to experience I have greater that I want you to do and the only way you can do it is if you go through the storm he said, he said look y'all I know y'all tripping I know y'all bugged out but but I'm going to the father's house to make space for you I, I want to make sure that I create an environment that's tailored to who you are. I, I, I got 12 rooms in my father's house that I have to manifest. Ooh, I feel that now. I have 12 rooms in my father's house that I have to design because Peter's room will not look like John's room, will not look like Andrew's room. And so God has a way in working in a space to create room for everybody in this room, everybody online that no matter how it looks if I understand that God is making room for me somebody should say God is making room for me he's making space because oftentimes what the enemy tries to do is block you from getting access to where God wants to take you the enemy will always try to deny you entrance 
He's like the governor in the South who says, y'all not getting in this school building. And so what Jesus does, because he has all authority in heaven and earth, is he deals with the haters in our lives. He moves people out of the way in order to make space for you. He causes people to act crazy Vashti in order to make room for you Esther he does all sorts of things he creates space for you so that Moses you will be found by the daughter of the Pharaoh he will put you in the pit and the prison in order Joseph to take you to the palace and so although the journey is crazy although the journey is confusing if you don't go to the pit to the prison you never know that he had created space for you in the palace and so he's saying trust me through the process because I'm taking you to a higher dimension and the third thing we see is that Jesus is our access point he's our access point because they said all right now all of that sound good and the Philip said Lord but but show us the way show me the way how, how am I gonna get there to where you're saying you are going you said I know the way I don't know the way you just done disappeared on us but he says you know the way I'm the way I, I, I'm the way watch this a way is a path see when you trust Jesus he will order your steps because a good person's steps are ordered by the Lord because he delighteth in their way see when I'm following and trusting Jesus even when I can't trace Jesus he leads and guides me into all truth he helps me to understand that the snakes and the vipers are only part of the process but they can't touch me Satan because God has his hand on you Job and so because God has his hand on you though you walk through the valley of the shadow of death you don't have to fear no evil because his presence presence is with me so I go through the process I go through the journey of being alone because I understand that he will order my path because his word is a light unto my path and a lamp unto my feet and so because it's a light unto my path and a lamp unto my feet I trust him with every step because he's feeding my spirit prophetic downloads to let me know you in the right place just keep on pressing just keep on pushing just keep on praising just just keep on worshiping just keep on ignoring all of your haters because they gonna have to come and bend the knee at your coronation because I'm the way I'm the truth see when you're on the path when you're on the way then you'll stumble into the truth uh-huh see when, when Saul was looking for his donkeys that his father had lost he stumbled into a prophet by the name of Samuel and Samuel told him that it really wasn't about the donkeys it was about you meeting me in order to tell you you're going to be king of Israel and so if you follow the donkeys <laughs> If you just keep walking down the path that God has for your life, you're going to stumble into the truth and you're going to find out that there was greater than you could have imagined, greater than you could have thought of, greater than you could have heard in anybody else's life because God wants to do exceeding abundantly above all that you can ask or imagine. But you got to stay in the race in order to see what the end's going to be. And then he says, I'm the life. Because when you're on the right path and you run into the truth, what you would discover is life. Uh -huh. Because when God brings you to your purpose, when he brings you to the destiny for which he has created you, it invigorates you and gives you life. When you think you're about to run out of gas, that's when God gives you an infusion to motivate you, to elevate your thinking, to elevate your praise, to elevate your spirit, so that you can keep doing what he wants you to do, so that you can go to 
where he wants you to go. Now, I know you're saying, Elder Hayes, you're getting too prophetic with the text. It's not about all of that. But yes, it is about all of that. And most importantly, it's about the spiritual life that is in Jesus Christ. Because when I come to Jesus, what I discover is that he awakens and illuminates my mind to a degree that I had never imagined before. It is the confusion and chaos in my life that brings clarity in my life. I'll say that again. It is the confusion and chaos in my life uh, that brings clarity in my life uh, because the more chaos, the closer I cling to him. The more difficulty, the closer I cling to him. And the closer I cling to him, the better I am on the way. The better I am in the truth. Uh, and the more life he brings in my life uh, and the more life he brings in my life uh, so that I'm able to not only have a thank you Jesus hallelujah but I'm able to do great exploits because I know the God that I serve and so it's in the cross then that we discover uh, that everything that Jesus wants to bring into my life is manifest uh, because it's in the cross that I find healing for my soul uh, it's in the cross that I find healing for my body uh, it's in the cross that I find healing for my mind it's in the cross that I find healing for my spirit it's in the cross that I find healing in my relationships it's in the cross that I find healing for my purpose in life and I wish I had some people in the building that understand that no matter what I'm going through that Jesus will get me there he'll get me through the storm if I just hold on he'll get me through the test if I just hold on he'll get me through the struggle if I just hold on. Uh, he'll get me through my haters if I just hold on. Uh, and I wish I had somebody in the building uh, that would give God the praise. Uh, praise him for the struggle in your life. Uh, praise him for the uncertainty in your life. Uh, praise him for the difficulty in your life. Uh, because the difficulty is bringing you to the other side. Uh, the difficulty is working a pan in your life. Uh, the difficulty is elevating your relationship with God but you gotta praise him in the midst of the pain you gotta praise him in the midst of the confusion you gotta praise him in the midst of the uncertainty you gotta praise him in the midst of the chaos you got to praise him in the midst of the heartache you gotta praise him in the midst of the devil you gotta praise him in the midst of your boss you gotta praise him in the midst of your neighbors is there anybody here that came to lift up the name of Jesus well I dare you to take 30 seconds and give God the praise because he will get you there if you just stay on the road he will get you there if you just stay in the battle he will get you there if you hold on to his unchanging hand I think I got some fighters in the building I think I got some trusters in the building I think I got some worshipers in the building I think I got some praisers in the building Building. He will get you there. Don't turn back, child of God. He will get you there. Don't throw in the towel. He will get you there. Don't lose hope. He will get you there. Don't give up the fight because he will get you there. Don't give up on your dream because he will get you there. Somebody put those hands together and give God the praise. Praise Praise him for his goodness. Praise him for his faithfulness. Praise him for the joy unspeakable and full of glory. Somebody give him the praise. Because he will. He'll get you there. I feel a shout coming on. He will get you there. Do it one more time. Dum, dum, dum. He will get you there. Come on, saints of God. He'll get you there. He'll get you to the next level. He'll get you to the next dimension. Uh, I feel somebody needs to be pushed this morning uh, because I feel a shift in the room. Uh, I feel a prophetic anointing in the room. Uh, somebody was about to throw in the towel, uh, but you're finna hang in there uh, because change is gonna come. Uh, hang in there uh, because you're at the end of the road. Uh, hang in there because it won't be much longer. Hang in there. 
Hang in there. Hang in there. Hang. Hang on in there. Hang in there. Touch your neighbor. Tell them, hang in there. You ain't six feet no way. Don't be scared. Hang in there. Because Jesus, he'll get you there. He'll get you there. I know you don't know what's going on. You don't know what he's doing. But God is moving pieces. He's moving people in. He's moving people out. He's orchestrating the affairs of your life. Uh, he's building you up so he can bring you in. Uh, he's kicking them out uh, so he can scoot you in. Uh, he's throwing out their resume, blowing yours on top. Uh, he's opening doors for you. But you got to believe. Uh, you got to trust. Uh, you got to believe. Uh, you got to trust. Uh, you got to believe. Uh, you got to trust. Daddy will get you there you get you there I don't know where your there is but I want you to get there in your mind as we go to worship I don't know what your there is I don't know what it is this hot off the press this is a 30 minute sermon so trust me he'll get you there I don't know where your there is but I want you to get it in mind because Jesus gave me a prophetic assignment on this morning to tell you and to tell you he'll get you there he'll get you there don't lose faith because you don't see him and can't touch him but he's here He's the one telling you don't quit. He's the one telling you keep pressing when you're on your knees, or in your chair, in your car and tears are rolling down your face. And you're saying, God, I don't understand. Why is this so hard? Why does it look like everything but what you said is coming to pass? Trust me. You believe in God? believe in me I got you I had to go to the cross it wasn't easy for me but I got there hallelujah my way there was through the cross to the tomb but I got up I got up Father, we thank you. We adore you. We lift your name on high because you are great and greatly to be praised. We thank you for your holy people. We thank you, God, that you have a prophetic manifestation that is coming to pass even now. That what you've spoken to our spirits must come to pass for you are not a man that you should lie nor the son of man that you would change your mind. What you said you would do, what you spoke, you will bring it to pass. So, Father, I pray for strength. I pray for courage. I pray for endurance. I pray for perseverance. Quicken now, your holy people, that we might fight the good fight of faith. Lay hold on eternal life, that we might apprehend the promise. Don't give up. Don't give in. That's what the enemy wants. You've been fighting this long. You've been swimming this long. You've been running. You've been walking. You've been limping this long. You gonna go back? Or are you gonna trust him to get you there? As we open the doors of the church, there may be someone who has not given their life to Jesus Christ. He will get you there. Now the there he was talking about was first and most importantly heaven. I'm not a jack leg preacher. He's talking about making a place for us in heaven so that we could spend the rest of eternity with God the Father. 
Are you here? Won't you come? Give your life to Jesus. The struggles, the storms, the trials of life. You need him to guide you. Because he's the way through. He will give you the truth. And he will give you life. And that more abundantly. Are you here? Won't you come? Get out of your seat and come. That's why you're here. You didn't come to be entertained. You came because you know that you can't make it through this life without Jesus. And so come on down. Come on down. Are you here? Are you here? Won't you come? Won't you come? Okay, God bless you. Yeah, take her down the other way. Thank God. Can we give God praise for that soul we don't want? To not give God praise for the soul that comes.